Uh, it's a great time for us to do so. We've gotten a lot done this year, and we're looking forward to some good things uh, on the horizon. So um, just a brief overview. Uh, we develop placental-based therapies. We make off-the-shelf products that are placental-derived, but then we modify them and develop them in three-dimensional um, technology, using three-dimensional technology. We've shown safety and efficacy in three clinical trials. Uh, and we have a manufacturing facility which has been approved by the FDA and by the EU. And Japan just recently announced that they approved the manufacturing manufacturing process and have declared the cells safe for use uh, in clinical trials in Japan. We have ongoing trials in um, five different countries, and we have a lot of experience with regulators in all of those places. Uh, financial glance, I would say the main takeaway is that we have 53 million in the bank as of June 30th. Our burn rate is about 23 million a year, so we have a nice uh, two years plus of runway, which is a great thing considering what the market looks like right now, so we're grateful for that. Um, and we have 40 granted patents, actually over 40, and we have uh, over 150 pending applications. Um, our technology and basically what we do is relatively straightforward. Uh, what we do is we take cells from placentas. Placentas are generally considered medical waste and thrown away. Um, so it's a very good uh, source for the type of cells that we harvest. We um, grow them and then modify them using epigenetic type of approach in bioreactors using three-dimensional technology which uh, has been uh, carefully patented. It takes about eight weeks to get to the final stage where the cells are frozen, and um, they have a shelf life of close to three years. We were very concerned about supply chain and uh, quality of the cells at point of care, so we developed a thawing device um, in which you can place a vial, push a button, and seven minutes later the cells are thawed and ready for use, which takes away the variability um, in the clinic or at a trial site. Uh, the way our cells work is uh, we inject them intramuscularly, and they sit there for about five or six weeks until they wash out. But while they're in the muscle, they don't go anywhere, they don't differentiate. What they do is they sense chemical signals from damaged tissue, and in response, they secrete a whole range of therapeutic proteins, which are tailored to the distress signals that a particular tissue is releasing. So if you give these cells to a healthy person with no disease process, they don't secrete anything. So they're really, uh, there's a crosstalk between damaged tissue and these cells. Um, right now, we have two products in trials, and we're developing additional ones. The first one is called PLX-PAD. And um, it addresses several aspects of a variety of indications. It reduces inflammation. It can stimulate growth of new blood cells, and, blood vessels, excuse, excuse me, and it stimulates repair of damaged or atrophied muscle. Um, our second product is called PLXR18, and this uh, works or focuses on bone marrow function uh, in a variety of indications. So just a quick overview of our pipeline. I'll go into it a little bit more in the following slides. We're active in several clinical spaces in, with each of our products, which of course um, de-risks, and it's a nice uh, place to be with this pipeline. The first area that we're active in is something called critical limb ischemia, which I'll discuss in a bit, um, for which we were granted the um, accepted into the Adaptive Pathways pilot project by the EU, uh, which is, gives us a lot of advantages, which I'll review in a moment. We have um, intermittent claudication, a related condition to CLI. We're also active in the orthopedic space in muscle injury. Um, we have an ongoing trial in a lung disease called pulmonary arterial hypertension, which is being run by one of our partners. Um, and those are the main thrusts for our first product. Our second product, PLXR18, um, we are looking right now um, to uh, run trials in the product for incomplete engraftment after hematopoietic cell transplantation um, for acute radiation syndrome uh, and um, a couple of other uh, indications as well, which are not as far along. 
So um, our partnerships or collaborations are very valuable to us. Um, the first one is United Therapeutics, which, was, uh, which is a U.S. biotechnology company. They are focused on pulmonary arterial hypertension and have the global rights for that indication. Um, you can see the deal structure on the right, but I'm going to um, let you read the slide because we have a very short time. Uh, our second partnership is Cha Biotech, which is running trials and will be forming a, vo a joint venture with us if it goes to commercialization um, for CLI and IC exclusively in South Korea. And our final collaboration right now is with the NIH's NIAID, which is um, supporting and running trials for us in acute radiation syndrome, which is uh, essentially how you die after a nuclear catastrophe. We're looking at the bone marrow um, failure component of that. Uh, we have our own facility, as I mentioned, which has been approved by multiple regulators. Um, this gives us a real uh, nice competitive advantage. We have a very low cost of goods. We control our own supply. And we've shown um, that we can take different donor placentas and use our process to make different cells. We can make 150,000 doses a year. And since we use bioreactors, we can just scale out by adding them in parallel. Um, so to look at PLXPAD, our first product, um, we're, our first indication, our lead indication with that is critical limb ischemia, which is a very large market size, um, and it's extremely expensive to take care of. These patients tend to have amputations, uh, they die, and they are in hospital for a long time, and it's a real uh, challenge because they're not great treatment options as the disease progresses. Uh, but essentially, uh, cholesterol will block blood flow to the legs, and you'll get um, gangrene and uh, amputation, sort of what results from that disease process. Um, we have, oh, here we go, just to give you a sense of the angiogenic capacity of the cells. Uh, on the top, we have well, both models, animal models, we tied off a major artery to the leg and administered our cells. And you can see um, after uh, 28 days that the top uh, vessels, which was treated um, animal, the flow is back in these major arteries. And in the bottom one with the placebo, you can see that that's not the case. Ah, trying to, there we go. So um, we had a phase one trial uh, in critical limb ischemia. One was in Germany and one was run in the U.S., um, which was, you know, not blinded just for safety, but we actually did see um, about a 60% reduction in risk of death or amputation a year after treatment. So that was a nice um, signal for us. This indication, like I said, we were accepted to the European Union's Adaptive Pathways Project. That's super, super important for a company um, because it gives us the opportunity to go to a conditional marketing approval several years earlier uh, than via the traditional pathway. So you can see we might be able to do that, you know, everything going well by 2018 versus uh, 2021, and this crowd can appreciate that that's actually meaningful as opposed to people outside of this space. Um, we've, we're also working on the um, accessing Japan's rapid regulatory pathway for regenerative medicine. We're moving forward with that. As I said, Japan recently recognized our manufacturing process and the safety of our cells for use in clinical trials in Japanese patients. Um, we also are working on an orthopedic indication. We announced last year phase two trial results, uh, which the trial was conducted in Germany at the Charité Hospital in Berlin. The context was um, in hip replacement surgery. So when you do hip replacement surgery, one of the ways you do it is you cut a muscle in the buttock, you flap it back, you replace the joint, and then you have to sew that muscle closed. And part of the problem is that the muscle doesn't always heal very well, and patients can have limps uh, and unstable gait after surgery, which kind of defeats the purpose. So um, our cells were injected single time at surgery into the cut muscle as it was repaired. And we looked at muscle strength six months after surgery. We had an incredible result. We had 500% improvement in muscle force in treated patients who received 150 million cell dose versus placebo. 
We saw um, about 40, the um, muscle volume was about 300% larger. Uh, again, very statistically significant in those who were treated with 150 million cells versus placebo. And the opposite or non-operated leg, which tends to be atrophied or weakened in patients who are already disabled with hip pain, was also about 40 times stronger in treated patients. So it had a systemic effect on the opposite muscle as well. Um, and we're actively looking, obviously, to partner uh, with for this moving forward in the orthopedic space. Um, we have ongoing trials right now in intermittent claudication. It's a 150-person phase two trial in U.S., Germany, um, South Korea, and Israel. We've recruited over 100 patients and are hoping to finish by um, the end of this year. And United Therapeutics is running a phase one open-label trial uh, for our cells in pulmonary arterial hypertension. Our second product, um, there's a range of target indications for this type of product. Um, the ones we're focusing on right now, we're pursuing first in, with a U.S. strategy. Uh, we, are, um, we had a very successful pre-IND meeting just a few weeks ago at the FDA for um, the incomplete hematopoietic recovery following hematopoietic cell transplantation, which means basically um, after you transplant cells that make blood cells, um, we, sometimes they work and sometimes they stick around, but they don't really make enough of the different cell lines. So that's something that we're looking to address. Uh, and we're preparing to submit a phase one protocol to begin um, our trial, hopefully first quarter of next year. We also are addressing acute radiation syndrome. Now, this is being funded and conducted exclusively by the NIH. They've completed several trials that were very positive results. Um, and then um, we had a very nice uh, FDA meeting, which they attended as well, um, to move on to large animal models with this, uh, for this indication. And this is important because this gets approved through the animal rule, because you can't give high or lethal levels of radiation, obviously, in human efficacy trials. So that's very exciting, and um, we're really looking forward to start those trials as well. Um, there are some other indications that we've done earlier work in, but we're not as far along with those. So um, essentially what we have in terms of milestones, there's a lot going on. We've had some really nice things happening this year, but what we're looking forward to now uh, in IC and in intermittent claudication, we, which is an earlier stage of critical limb ischemia, again, where cholesterol is blocking blood flow to the legs. We're hoping to finish enrollment end of this year, first quarter next year. Then we would need um, data readout would take about a year, and then we're hoping to license that out. Uh, we're not looking to conduct the phase three in that. For CLI, um, if we su succeed going down the adaptive pathways and the conditional approval pathway in Europe, um, which we've, you know, we've started, like I said, already in the adaptive pathways project, we have the opportunity, if everything goes well, to um, finish and apply for conditional marketing approval in 2018, which is we're very excited about. Uh, in Japan, we're still um, we're a little behind in terms of the pacing of where we are in the process. But again, if everything were to go as planned, we would also be looking to enter the market in the same uh, range of time. Orthopedic indication after a successful phase two, we're looking to partner out. Um, and hematology, we're, we're looking, as I said, to move um, with the study initiation in the uh, hematopoietic transplantation uh, engraftment issue. And the ARS is the same uh, sort of timeline. Um, I will say that the, um, the preeclampsia is something that we had done a lot of preclinical work in, a lot of animal model work in, and we had gone to the FDA um, to begin that trial. We were asked to um, do a few additional animal trials, which we are working on now. So that's where we are with that. Um, management team, I have 23 seconds, so I will just tell you about uh, the first two guys on the top of the page. The first one's Ami Aberman has been um, chair or CEO of dozens of companies in the last 20 years. Uh, he also has a degree in biomedical engineering, so he's you know, very equipped on both ends of the skill set to run the company. He's grown the company um, from about eight people when he came on to 165 people where we stand now. 
Uh, Yaki Anai, the president and CEO, has also been with the company since 2007. Uh, and uh, the rest of the, the team is really um, terrific, and I'm happy to discuss them later on. So uh, that's the presentation. Thank you very much.